Hello and welcome to Team Forest TV. This is admirable tonight, or today, to ask this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are. I'm joined by Yuki and we got Spammer. What's up, guys? And I, I've, 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 uh, 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 I've been having more alcohol than you. You probably haven't even had any. And <laughs> you're stumbling words more than I am, so it's good to be here, though. Uh, had a bit of a kind of roller coaster of emotions today, but this should definitely be the top end of that, so looking forward to it. Spammer, how's it going? Let the people hear your beautiful voice. I've been so impressed. I've only met you for five Hello. or ten minutes here. Hello. How's it going, guys? So, ah, uh, man, this should be interesting to watch, I think. It's Listen funny to that as well, accent, Europe. Yeah. In America. Oh Listen to that <laughs> accent. Like, try and guess in the chat where this guy is from. The yeah. Asians will know. Like, they'll know, but, like, yeah, what the Asians a know crazy, about my, like, yeah, beautiful they've heard accent. Me. Yeah, they've yeah. heard me, but the Europeans will be. Uh, yeah, they'll be confused with my accent. But you want to hear something? This is funny because the last finals had a Korean team and a Japanese team in the finals. Like, man, it's the like finals of what? Oh, wait, we should probably oh, tell I, them I what, what the hell we're here to cast, right? Yeah, well, I think we should tell them that. Do you want to introduce? <laughs> this, is the, this is the Asia Forest Cup Season Seven Division One Grand Final between Mook Unji and Kuso Scout and. Please pardon my pronunciation, Asia. <laughs> Deal with it. We're here for three maps. Maybe it's going to be Snakewater, Badlands, and a Pro Viaduct Decider. Both these teams uh, came to the semi-finals, which we also casted earlier. But today we've got Spama, who is uh, apparently some sort of Asia Fortress legend. I want you to yes. big this up. Sell it okay, to me. well, all right. So basically, I mean, whatever you guys saw in the semifinals was is a bit of a disappointment, maybe, because I mean, you obviously saw five zero rolls. So, but here in the finals, uh, again, you've got a Korean team, and, and you know how Koreans are amazing at video games. So, unless it's Dota expect, two, yeah, <laughs> Dota two, lol, whatever, man. So yeah, you can expect these guys to be really, really, really good. Mukunji, they've got. Um, some players who've been playing for years, for um, uh, even as early as back as season two, I think, in Age of Fortress, uh, especially that their medic called Life. I, th I don't know where he is. I think he's connecting. But yeah, um, a lot of old school veterans in both teams. And if you look at the the blue side, Kuso Scott. Oh my God, these guys are also veterans. Very old school players. Not upon Toki, Vac, Peanut, Namida. Uh, Peanut has played for an old uh, team called Deep Population, I think, and he's a really, really like he's basically he was the backbone uh, uh, of the team. He's like a pocket soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, Namida is, I think, is a, a new school scout. I don't know. Toki is another beast. I mean, basically, you're looking at two amazing DM heavy uh, teams, man. I think it's gonna be a great, uh, great grand finals. It's going to be brutal action, and it will be John on the camera guiding us through. Also, uh, shout out to John for doing the most thankless task in Team Fortress 2. Yuki, uh, how are you feeling about this game? You know, who do you think is going to win? Are we actually going to go live? No, oh, we're not. No, we? we're not. <laughs> uh, it depends. Whoever doesn't have plus four typed into their console, I think that team will have the disadvantage, so... As long as everyone has plus four <laughs> held down, then they're all good. But no, on a serious note, uh, in sobriety aside, I think this should be a definitely very fun, very close game. Both teams have very high DM, uh, communication, a bit of a like, X factor kind of as well, just because that communication barrier in Asia Fortress teams, I mean, like Kusa Scout has like people from Japan, people from wherever it is from, Singapore place. Uh, Namida, I'm pretty sure he's not any of those, and XVO is Malaysian, so all over the shop, but, and I'm pretty sure all of MEJ are Korean, so, no, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, and, um, maybe I'll do a, a little bit of a, a roster rundown here, or maybe I'll give it over to Spammer, actually, he can do a roster rundown. Uh, I'll try. Uh, so, on the blue side, it's Kuzo Scout, and uh, Natapon is going to be the pocket soldier roaming. I don't know. Like, this guy has changed uh, classes. I think it's Peanut that's going to be pocket. Mm, probably. 
But yeah, Natapan has switched classes like in, in the semifinals as well. He changed from a roaming soldier to a demo, and that's when you guys saw um, Kusa Scout turn it around. I think they they put the pressure back on. I forgot the team they played against. So, anyways, yeah. So you've got Natapan a roaming probably peanut pocket soldier. Vac will be the medic. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who everything about you is. Um, Toki and Namida will be the scouts. No, I think okay, hang on. So everything about you is yeah XVO. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, on the red side, you've got M.M. Um, Mukunji, whatever. It's going to be a uh, creep as the, the pocket soldier. Babel will be the roaming. Fax and HSK are new scouts. Uh, from what Metapon has told me, that they've uh, played a lot of uh, Counter-Strike in the past. So, they're bringing their Counter-Strike aim, basically, into TF2, and, and they've had a lot of success in that. Um, the medic, I'm not sure who the medic is, and same for the demo as well, I'm not sure. Uh, upon the demo is OPD, that's what I was told oh, pre-game. No way, oh, oh god, is that him? Alright, okay. <laughs> uh, well, if it's OPD, Thanks, then uh, OPD's, uh, OPD stands for Overpowered Moment, and he's a really, really good demo. Probably like uh, one of the best demo men in Asia, and I mean, it's gonna be a lot of fun watching him. Like it's it's not about his DM mostly, but it's more about his um his intelligence when he plays a, a high level games. So you guys are gonna see that today. It's about how much damage OPD does, even if he's in a bad position, versus how much he doesn't, because he's practically the crux of the team. I mean, like sometimes he may be in a bad position, you'll be like, "Wow, that's retarded, OPD! What the hell are you doing?" But if he's done umpteen billion damage, it's like, well. My team's just going to roll over anyway, so even if he dies, assuming he's done the damage, then that's all good, but yeah, we'll just see. I mean, to me, if, if, you, uh, if you ask me, uh, there's nothing special about the way he plays, but just that, for some reason, when there is a team fight happening, like, he makes the most uh, absurd plays ever, like, I don't know how he manages to... Uh... To catch them, I don't like. I don't know how he managed to kill them, really. But he's got some amazing uh, trick jumps as well as a demo, and that's why you see him alive in a lot of the fights. Because you would imagine the demo w would be the focus, would be the target, right? But he's yeah. always alive in most team fights in Asia. And do you think the advantage that he has is that he, he does these crazy unexpected things and just catches people off guard a lot, or oh, is yeah. it just that he can put out a lot of damage, or some sort of combination of the two? I I think it's both, really. It's a combination of both, and it's also the trick jump factor. Like, this is the reason why he stays alive in the most of the team fights. like I said. So, I think it's, it's his escapability. Uh, like, that's his main factor. That's why he's, he's, uh, he's a feared demo, man. Alright, well, let's, right. let's pair these two teams up. If you look at them player for player, where do you see the, the weaknesses or the, the strengths for each side? Who do you think is going to make the difference if you, if you look at these rosters, Spammer? Um... I wonder who their medic is um, uh, for M.E. Jake. They seem to be using a different medic. That might be their downfall. I don't know. Because life is really, he's seriously experienced as a medic. And he's been through all those uh, weird situ uh, situations, right? All those uh, narrow situations where it's, it's uh, basically do or die. So, yes. uh, I don't know. It could be the, the, the medic. Uh, that's the weak point for M.E.J. However, on Kuso Scout, we've got the demo, XVO. Like, he's not been having the best of the semifinals last time, so we might see him again with a lackluster performance. I don't know. So that's what I think. Uh, for Kuso Scout, it's the demo, who's going to be the weak point. And for MEJ, it's going to be the medic, I feel. Yeah. Well, yeah, Snake Water, very demo centric map. But, um. Oh, what's their name? That's one. Kuso Scout, yeah. Peanuts Pocket now, and he's. Bit of an MGE aim whore, so look for him to, you know, potentially be the X Factor. Like, I wouldn't be too surprised if he pulls out, like, 16,000 air shots. So that's right, Peanut. I don't speak too much Japanese, but if you don't hit air shot to Desu enough, then you will be the reason <laughs> your team loses. So, many air shot Desu. <laughs> These guys seem uh, happy enough with the server. They're talking about readying up. I've got one more question about this game. Are you guys hyped? Yeah, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Like, yeah, even though I've ready. seen the Korean and Japanese team in the finals before, I'm ready again. My body's um, ready. <laughs> Peanut has you, 10 ping. You, you, you better hit, like, a thousand air shots. I swear to God. So much pressure. <laughs> huh, what? Hello? L listen All to the, the change in Yuki's voice. When he came in here and he was talking to us pre-game, man, he was, like, he was, like, going in slow motion, like he'd taken a lot of tranquilizers or something. Nice. No, he's, he's getting into the game. He's in his element. He's ready to cast. Maybe I should it have more vodka. 
Uh, what was the question? <laughs> that was the question. Are you ready? Are you hyped? Oh, I'm so ready. My body is ready. <laughs> Oh, I keep hearing teams ready up and then unready up. You know, they're just teasing us here, guys. Uh, Playing with my heart. Unacceptable. Absolutely. But, uh, well, as I said, this is going to be a best of three. Snake or will be the first map. Badlands the second. And Pro Viaduct, the decider. Would you favour any of these teams in any of these maps? Or do you just think it's going to turn into a giant clusterfuck? It's got to be a, cl a giant clusterfuck. It's Asian Fortress. It's going to be a clusterfuck. But, uh... Looks depends, like we're going uh, As you were saying, it depends if XVO... I'll play ZOBD because this is more a demo map right now. If you have just joined us, this is Team Fortress TV's coverage of Age of Fortress's Cup no, Season 7 Division 1 Grand Final here for Mook and G event versus Kuso Scout Spammy. Tell me what's happening in the middle. Um, so I'm watching OPD. He's got his stickies on top and... Oh, a soldier's gonna jump in. I think that's probably gonna be Babel. No, Natapon. Right, okay, Natapon is our team. He goes down and now we've got Toki and Vac. They're gonna clean up um, Creep and OPD. Uh, that scout's doing work well, here for MEJ. Yeah, Bex goes in yeah, and look gets at XVO. Yeah, look at Pino. Like he's taking a lot of coverage. Uh, he's taking a lot of ground in the middle, and he's, he's pressuring them back off the point. And he's probably going to catch the medical to uh, the pocket soldier. Whoa, Pino's got to be careful. Toki's down though, and uh, MEJ's for, uh, forced to pop Uber. Pino's going to chase the medic, and well, yeah, I think they're going to clean the pocket soldier in the middle too. Medic survives, who gets out of there for MEJ, and that's going to mean that they can maintain some sort of foothold in this uber battle right now. Yuki, what did you think of that first middle? Peanut was super sugoi. Despite having like even players, he, <laughs> he was the one that actually took positioning on that middle point and just forced the enemy combo back, forced the early uber, and just took dominating position as a result of that. So, you're going to see Kuso Scout taking control of the second point. But there's a sneaky, sticky, uh, sticky, oh my god, trap set up. Banata Pond with nice kill on HSK. Next year with the kill on Creep as well. Banata Pond does get taken down for his troubles. But that's a one man advantage for Kuso Scout. And they should be able to take the second point pretty easily. With, not before Babel takes a quick kill on Peanut, so Pocket Soldier's down. But they do cap the point, admirable. Yeah, it's turned into a 4 on 4 here. It looked like some sort of mistimed aggression there. Uh, from MEJ, but somehow they managed to keep their medic up and just stabilize things. They did lose the point though, but I think that was probably a fairly good situation for them. Now they've got an NG on last, they're going to go full turtle mode here. And it is still Uber versus Uber. I'm watching uh, Kuso Scout just probe in on the left hand side on that attacking perspective. There's, they've spotted out the soldier up top, looks like he's going to get focused down. Then my man tags him with the sticky, we're going to see the jump in here. And yes, Natapong picks up. Two gets the sentry gun and gets creep there, and that's what they needed to kick the door open here, guys. Um, uh, if you ask me, it's a very early Uber, and I think MEJ is going to counter attack. Uh, counter, well, yeah, counter attack properly. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, they're getting cleaned up. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a full team wide for uh, MEJ. So the problem there was they they Ubered way too early, and I I think uh, Natapon died way too fast as well. I mean, granted, he, he got a kill, but uh, he died way too fast. That's the Singaporean mentality you see there. Like, as Singaporeans are very uh, uh, objective-oriented, sometimes yeah. but it also blinds them. So, uh, so when they play, like, you see them to uh, tunnel vision on some things that they should not. <laughs> this is a uh, deep uh, political yeah. socio insight here, man, Funny. and <laughs> loving it. Right now we've seen a, a little bit of a trade going on here in middle, but the red team, MEJ, are slowly but surely taking ground. They're going to send an aggressive sword here up top, Creep jumps in and takes control of that high ground. Not all of Kuso Scout are just forced to eat his spam, but they're getting the hails. They've flashed the Scout here, got a little buff, and the Scouts are pushing through on the left. They've got the Uber forced off as well, the Scouts are behind, the red team are just getting enveloped here by Kuso Scout, and this is gonna end poorly for them. Wow, well played there by Kuso Scout. What about that? Man, MEJ should have actually known they had about a 40 or so percent uber advantage, but they didn't really know at all. I don't know, maybe... I thought maths was supposed to be good for Koreans, but apparently not. Um, Kuso Scout retake that fourth point, and they do have a uh, two-player advantage, so OPD and Creep gonna respawn in the end. But, uh, Sentry going to be slowly built up, but there should actually be slight room for advantage for Kuzo Scout to move in here, admirable. As good spam coming in from OPD on that left side, as yeah, that Sentry gun does get taken down twice, so... I don't know, Sentry down. Gotta admire the perseverance, but... Yeah, so... 
It's oh, they're gonna get time on the point. They have managed to clean up enough people. It won't even matter who can't do anything about that. And uh, yeah, the sentry gun. They didn't give them um, like even a minute to set up any defense. They're straight in. Picked it with the scout, then spammed it down with the soldiers. They were just like in their face constantly. Very aggressive. I'm enjoying this so far, guys. Uh, that was Toki right there. Like he went in boss deep, and he got OPD, and and killing the demo man is pretty much uh, a good thing when you're when you want to push less. So that allowed his team to capital. And we're gonna see MEJ put a lot of damage onto the top right hand side of their perspective. Big bomb comes in from that point. And gets who somehow, even though he was getting focused down by three or four MEG players, he still managed to get that medic pick. And it looks like MEJ are going to crumble here. And our streamer oh. John's TF2 has crashed, so it's going to be a radio cast here, guys. Keep talking oh, very yeah. quickly. Paint a picture with your words, Yuki. I'm, I'm going to speak slowly because there's no video. No, <laughs> I'm just. Um... Well, MEJ lost their medic really early in the trade of a roaming soldier. The problem was they didn't go aggressive quickly enough to try and capitalize on that DM player advantage. So they got pr practically steamrolled in result of player advantage. I mean, they did kill the enemy medic, but I think Vak is using Kritzkrieg. Yeah, I saw that charge building quickly, so slight over advantage, but not before Fex and Babel with a quick 2 kill. But OPD taken down, star player for MEJ, and oh my god, Creepy gets get taken down as well, but XVO down as well, so... Only two players up, that is Vac and Peanut, the combo up for Kuso Scout. And Uber advantage is actually stabilizing, so it's going to be pretty even for Kuso Scout. Despite them cupping up that point and MEG having to recap it, uh, it's going to be a bit of a reset. And you know, with no Uber advantage whatsoever, despite having that Crits Creek, uh, Kuso Scout definitely have to watch out. Yeah, that Crits Creek can sometimes give you like a, a false sense of security. You think you're in a strong position and you realize you're like four players down. Now they're sitting in a tough spot here. Maybe they'll get the surprise crits pop here. That's really what they need. Ooh. They have crits in here, but the pop is good from who and he's going to save everybody in his team. They picked up XVO as well for their troubles. Natapon goes down. That's a two-man advantage as they push into middle. The KS guys need to be looking for that door. They're backing off here. They will still have a crit advantage if they build as well, but they're going to have to give up ground and might even have to give up four at this rate. What do you think? Yeah, like once again, just... Like they have crit streak, but the Uber is, like, dead even. It's not what you want to have when you're running crit streak. Not only do they use the crit streak earlier than them, they have crit streak, so they should have an innate 25% advantage. So, poor play by Kusa Scout with this crit streak swap. I don't think it's really suited them, and XVO is in Africa, does get taken down. And, yeah, look, once again, practically even Ubers. Like, Kusa Scout gonna need a miracle to pull away with this, but... HSK with a nice kill on Amidar. Huge player advantage for MEJ. They're going to be Ubering any second now against the Crits Creek, and they should be able to stomp this Admirable. Yeah, they're getting those Uber players. This is wow, they're going to clean up. The Sun does come in. That's going to be too late. What have we got that, Spammer? Um, a lot of mistakes by Kuzo Scout. I mean, it felt like they had to have direction, like the last middle, and then XVO and uh, Tokyo thing were still hanging around second point, when they should have fallen back to last, and then they got caught, and that allowed MEJ to cap two points easily, and yeah, it gave them time as well to charge the Uber, build the Uber, rush last, and get uh, cap last as well. So, bad mistakes, bad decision making by Kuzo Scout in this round. I'm watching uh, XVO in his place when he's trying to do damage. Stop right again, there comes that woman from Creep. Uh, gets denied by Toki, and now can they maintain this man advantage to push forward? No, he was too quickly. Peanut in the meter. Go down there, the scout. HSK getting the meter and be able onto Peanut. Some pocket on pocket action, I think, there. But it is Medigun versus Medigun right now, but the territory is looking good for Kuso Scout and the man advantage. They're going to be able to cap middle and maybe chase down. Oh, Uber gets forced off a middle. Vex going huge there. Yeah, it doesn't matter all that much because, uh, t like Kuzo Scout retained, uh, um, yeah, retained a full player advantage. Like despite using Uber Charge, they should be able to at least pressure this second point. Maybe pressure the Uber Charge out of MEJ and then fall back if that happens, and then just repush with the Uber advantage in the end. And then, yeah, the longer that MEJ take to use this Uber and get some good damage done with it, then the better it is for Kuzo Scout. And sure enough, Uber's force. Kuzo Scout maybe lose one, two players max. Looks like they're going to practically lose nothing at all, so well played by them, admirable. And, oh, they do lose a scout in the end, but there is a good trade, so well played by them. Yeah, they hemmage, MEJ hemmaged a few players there on that uh, defense, but they seem to have managed to shore things up. But no! Who goes down the medic 
gets picked off by XVO and it's just turned into a bit of a shitstorm here for them. <laughs> it's getting really crazy as back goes down as well and this is what I was looking for from Asia Fortress. Somehow they've capped the point. And, uh, if, you, uh, if you want to know the line of thinking there was because uh, MEJ knew that Kusa Scout would be building Uber, so they decided to go fully aggressive and, and what happened was both medics got caught and both medics ended up dying. Um, the first medic was, uh, uh, who we called Vac? Yeah, and then uh, who died. So, uh, it was good thinking by MEJ, but unfortunately they're for, uh, forced to defend last now. Yeah, and uh, that's a decent trade for the attacking thing, they got that chance oh, to go crit screen, but they choose not to. There was a big bomb in there from that point, but uh, didn't get anything done. It'll be interesting to see if he spawns as an off-class to try and break this turtle defense, or will he stay as soldier i'm about to be proven right thank you he's gonna go sniper here we're gonna see some scope action on last here on snake water if you have just joined us this is team fortress tv's coverage of the asia fortress cup season 7 division 1 grand final this is admirable with yuki spammer and john on the camera we're about to watch nanapon snipe from lower can he get that medic body shot oh, oh. he shoots between the legs that's that funny here <laughs> uber's popped off here on the uh, right hand side on the attacking perspective oh. they're in and uh, they managed to kill a lot of his structures but not much else there's Nanapon getting a headshot though on the HSK and XVO went down to OPD right at the end of that he's picked up two as they chase down those frags oh wow this isn't looking like a successful push here Spammer oh yeah um, OP did I mean a successful defense by OPD like he got two important picks and he um, he scared the scat away who died anyways it's good uh, good discipline I think by MEJ if you watch them play Kusa scout like to take more risks and and if they make mistakes they end up paying for it heavily but uh, it's good for MEJ though, uh, MEJ though I get the strong feeling that it's gonna be a slow and uh, controlled uh, gameplay by MEJ so we'll have to see yeah, it's definitely a playstyle that can be very successful on uh, Snake Water. It is a map where you can definitely sl slow things down a bit. Oh, You've yeah. even seen heavies and snipers probably in some uh, old games in Europe. But hopefully we're going to see the balls out action that I've come here for. I need my uh, adrenaline fix. That's why I'm watching and casting Asia Fortress here. It comes in waves, it comes in cycles basically, so it will, it'll, it'll explode pretty soon. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, right now we're in a classic stalemate here between two and three. Yuki, how do you like to approach this one as the aggressor? If you're in the Kusu Scout shoes here, what's your game plan? I just push yard, to be honest, like with the team, because like, MEJ actually gave me so much room in the yard area, they can just walk there, because OPD is focusing completely on the soul room area. If they just walked yard, like really fast, just got in there. They should be able to take around uh, ground really easily and, you know, potentially force an Uber, maybe get a pick or something, but they're taking their time, so MEJ are going to be able to readjust the defense, the demo is going to get some spam on, so see what happens here. Yeah, they've uh, been very patient here, walking forward, forcing the spam out, then coming in whilst they were rebooting, now the Uber gets forced off, but it's already a good trade because Babel's gone down for MEJ, Napon will go down in exchange, but HSK, the scout of G also died, but it's turned into a 4 on 4 situation. Both soldiers down right now for Kuso Scout, and they're having trouble. Medics have survived, but now it's going to turn into a bit of... Yep. Oh, the focus fire from the okay. meta, and Toki doing yeah. work there, going to clean house. The X-Factor was there, despite yeah. even, Uber, uh, sorry, uh, even players on both sides. Uh, Kuso Scout had a scout advantage, uh, whereas they killed another scout on the other team quite early. And when quite often post Uber fights, scouts reign supreme and they just rain tell on the other team, just picking off player from player. And 70% Uber, uh, Uber advantage for Kuzo Scout. Uh, they should be able to rule them to this last point, assuming they don't kill Bind. We'll just have to wait and see. Maybe they might just kill Bind. Wow, the, the stickies of uh, OPD being shown no respect for the. They do eventually pop actually as Kusu Scout come in on that right hand side. They're gonna bring in four players for that charge. And uh, they're trying to pick up frags. They do get the medic boot and Babel very quickly. Now only Fex remains alive. It looks like they're gonna make this a two to one game here. And uh, this is reminding me of some of those semi-final games where it was just quick back and forth. Uh, round after round in return, but it's gonna be a two to one as we go here to the fourth middle. Spammer, what were your thoughts on that last? Passage I'm not sure what, 
I'm not sure what was going on with MEJ really. Like they lost their pocket soldier in, in, in the last, uh, in the second push, and even the last as well. Like, I'm not sure how the pocket's playing, and maybe Creep's got to step up as well. If you look at the scoreboard, like if you want to go through frags alone, then Creep has got to step up. Uh, oh my God, XVO got taken down. So it's the same thing we saw in, in, in the previous round as well. XVO has no chance, like against, uh, I mean, their scouts and demo. Like he's getting outskilled uh, out team a lot. So, I mean, he's got to step up big time. Is he, uh, is he not getting the support from his team? Like I noticed uh, one of his scouts, I think it was Namida, was actually playing very aggressive, dropped down and uh, tried to put damage onto OPD but didn't really get anything done if he tried exactly. to defend his own demo you man just instead. Hit the nail that's the problem, yes, that's the problem. Uh, Toki and Namida are two super aggressive ballsy scouts and they know, because they've got the aim, they know they can pressure and do a lot of damage. Unfortunately their demo gets <laughs> uh, left out alone and he dies. Like. Yeah, so they really have to uh, play more of a team-oriented style. Yeah, absolutely. They've been punished now that they've lost middle and four. It's going to be Uber versus Uber, though, here on to last. And MEJ just really trying to figure out how they want to do this. They're getting their players buffed, but uh, XVO is making it real difficult for them. He's just spamming from that drop down, putting down a lot of damage, taking away those buffs and forcing off that charge. The counter Uber comes in quickly from back, and both teams oh, trade. No. But there's action oh, going. XVO is going to die. Yeah, that was a very bad tough. play. That was a very bad mistake by XVO. Like he thought he could he could uh, backtrack and you know escape from there, but OPD is smart. This is why OPD is one of the best of him, man. Like he, it's his intelligence. He he he, he knew what uh, XVO was gonna do, and he got him. Oh well, Pina just he killed the medic as well. Heavy. <laughs> Jeez, that heavy. <laughs> you got uh, that heavy sort of clutch there. Yeah. Well, it was kind of more clutch that OPD walked into a heavy. <laughs> but uh, unfortunate there, so MEJ actually have a very late medic death, so huge uber advantage to use a scout. Probably about 80% by the time he starts healing someone. Well, 75%. I've had vodka, so I can't count. Close enough. But uh, Kuzu scout actually have a scout advantage as well and a super advantage, so it's actually not that bad if they uber in because by the time the uber fades, MEJ won't have uber, and on the plus side, Kuzu scout would have kept the mid. Sure enough, XVO jumps in. Yolo, why not? Uber dropped by back. That was awful. Minus 50 DKP for you, no raids for you anymore. But uh, <laughs> XVO trying to get aggressive, doing some good damage. Number I'm trying for some flankers as well, does take down that demo man with the help of Peanut. And this looks like a pretty decent mid cap for Kusa Scout. Despite MJ and Wissing up Uber, they have no players up. Who's gonna get taken down? And Toki and XVO are the sole survivors. Creep gonna be the quick spawn, but he, there's no way he can 1v2 in this situation, no matter how much health he has. XVO with the quick stickies there, and this should be the mid cap. And Kusa Scout can have a very slight uber advantage. You would have felt like after a creep got that medic pick, maybe uh, MEJ could have just collapsed onto who and tried to keep him alive there, but they didn't go that route and they just seemed to get out death there. Is there, is there any other like, way to uh, say it? There's a pause, maybe they didn't have plus four typed in console like I thought they needed to, <laughs> so a bit of a tactical error there. Yeah, it doesn't, like, uh, if you look at the previous cups and the previous tournaments, Kusa Scout, when their meta goes down, they are basically turtle and they kind of, like, lose focus, as most Asian teams do. But, um, I think they've gotten over that. Like, they actually went full aggression mode and they killed everybody. Like, I, I think Kusa Scout has stepped up a lot. They're playing a lot better uh, in this uh, tournament. Yeah, they do seem controlled, as you said earlier, and, uh, seem to have a, a bit more cohesion, a bit more of a game plan. They aren't just trying to like skill it, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do love pauses as well. Yuki, I think you need to do that uh, air bicycle count that you love so much. I'm just going to ask now, upon what's the deal? Well... Don't mind me. Uh, as it stands right now, oh there's a little unpause, we're going to get back in to the game. Immediately there will be uh, no more pausing, the HUD might be broken for a short period of time so bear with that on the stream. Nothing John can do about that, that's just uh, the way pauses in Source TV and HUDs work. But right now we're going to see Natapon lead a one man push there guys, going super aggressive on his own, trying to get something done. But uh, actually he will just die. I mean, just press tab. Look at the scoreboard right now. Like, Kusa scouts, uh, scouts are carrying big time. I mean, they're going full aggression mode, and uh, I, I think the scouts alone are proving to be um, um, the 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 main force here or the main uh, 
Which car? What would you say? Oh my god, my English. I was gonna say, they're proving to be the most uh, prob uh, problematic uh, element in the game, and... I don't know, MBJ's yeah, gotta deal with them pretty soon. They're, uh, the workhorses, they're uh, really carrying the weight here, it seems. Now we're gonna see MEJ pop off that charge on this uh, extended mid fight, <laughs> or uh, attempted retake of middle here. And it's actually KS who are coming out the worst of this. They're gonna make a break for the exit here. They're gonna get out with both scouts, Vak, Toki, and the Mita actually get out this time and not Auckland to go in and try and just clean house. They felt the, the health wasn't good, the damage wasn't good for them there. After that Uber had faded, they didn't want to go in and try and roll the dice there. They backed out, they're going to try and uh, play it smart here. And maybe yeah, that's... Asian team fights tend to be very messy for some reason. I mean, it seems to be less about teamwork and more about DM. I mean, you will see a scout... Ver I mean, you will see unbalanced matchups like a scout versus a, a soldier or whatever, but... I don't know, I, um, there is some teamwork uh, and some element of teamwork that could be improved upon in, Asian, uh, in the Asian scene, I think, so... Yeah. Oh, wow, look at who's the scout. They want it. They're playing so aggressive in the in the star room area. I think they're trying to push out, but oh, they do get a kill on HSK the scout. This could be their time to push in. And yeah, you see them probing and peeking. They're probably going to make their way into the star room. And now the pawn's going to lead the way as well as the, the roaming soldier. Probably going to dive soon. Oh well, wow, Vax got to be careful. But yeah, oh, <laughs> you know, there he finally jumps and he fails his rocket jump. He's going to jump again. It's good, it's good positioning by Natapon as well, because he's got slowly taking ground in the middle. Uh, both Ubers have been forced, and MEJ is going to back off, I think, because Namita is... Is this guy in the flank? Yeah, yeah. HSK comes through from Kitchen, but gets shot down, misses his shots. Oh, yeah. Doesn't get those meat shots anyway, but it's turning into a real melee only. Who remains alive? And uh, Looks like MEJ were picking too many fights there, didn't have that focus fire. Uh, when they needed it, and they got cleaned up by the the more solid-looking Kuso Scout here. Yugi, what do you feel about that last engagement? Falling asleep, I guess, guys. Oh, typical. <laughs> at least well, I've got just, the, well, the beautiful Well, just press tab and here. have a look at the scores. I mean, look at the Kuso Scout, Scout. I mean, just have a look at the score and you can tell a lot. I mean, from how the games go. Absolutely. And, uh... You'll also be able to see on our HUD that there is a massive uber advantage here for VAC. So this is really a, a great opportunity here for Kusu Scout to convert this push in around the... I believe with the demo man, but he gets launched sky high. He doesn't get taken down, his medic doesn't even need to save him as he splashes everybody else in. They focus down that heavy immediately and just bomb rush that point. That looked like no problem there as Kusu Scout make it a 3-1 lead here against... Mook and G in this Asia Cup Season 7 Division 1 Grand Final Map 1. This is CP Snakewater. And by my estimations, there are 8 minutes left on the clock. Spamma, what are you expecting to see here on the middle from MEJ? How are they going to change it up? I don't know if they can change it up. I, I think they're they're kind of in a status, uh, stasis right now. They've really got to deal with the Kusa Scout Scout, and they really have to shut them down. They need their health from their roaming soldier as well. Again, you see the Scout was trying to uh, backstab, but he got taken down to Nita. Now this is... Whoa! <laughs> I think OPT got an air pipe and not a pawn. So now this is uh, Jay's turn to put, put on the pressure, and they have to do it really fast without taking a lot of damage. And they're kind of like lingering around in the middle, and OPD's kind of alone. And they've got to go together, I feel. You see, I think... I think what's happening right now is that OPD is telling his team to push forward, like, you, s you saw him with like 80 HP or something, uh, telling his team to push forward, urging his team, so yeah, finally, they uh, finally take some aggression. I think they've realized that they need more aggression in the team, and uh, yeah, they're doing that now. Yeah, the scary thing about that middle was it just seemed totally luck-based, like, uh, Namita ran forward and hit six shots onto OPD, but couldn't kill him if he'd actually done more damage with those shots. Nobody was there to protect OPD until Namita was actually empty and reloading. Yep. So um, he managed to survive that one and then hit a sick air pipe and that just seemed to turn things. Now they're in popping off charges here on that right hand side but their health is pretty bad after these Ubers fade. Kuso Scout in a, are in a much superior oh, look position at if they do want to push. I thought XP was going to do something snaky, but again, that was OPD I think. OPD and the soldiers pushing the Uber back with the sticky alone. This, uh, I don't know like if I can stress it enough, but OPD man. OPD. Look at Amida here as the heavy weapons guy. Just, uh, Peppering their them there in the lobby with some hot lead. There's a soldier in the drop lane as well. Watch creep right now. He's coming in on the flank. He might go for the back cap. He's going to be up against the heavy. He jumps in. He's only got three rocks after he jumps, and he can't land enough there to do damage. Obviously, working with those gunboats is tough, I think. But uh, isn't able to take down the heavy. 
Is he running the shotgun? Should be see the pocket. Um, who? Creep. Is he roaming? Yeah. He's roaming. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think you should have a look at this cool board again. Look at Toki. He's got four dominations. <laughs> Pretty decent. Oh, God. We're gonna see Sniper here from Fex. He's uh, playing from window and uh, just trying to bait out that KS push. Namid is already out. He dies to the scour gun of HSK. And with the man dying, I'm pretty sure Kusu and Scout are going to fall back to last, and that's going to give uh, a little bit of room here, more than likely, for the Fex to try and get a headshot off. It is. It's actually, his team get forced here. The stickies in from XVU are enough to pop off that Uber. And both teams now back to square one in terms of Uber percentage, but OPD has just not got the memo. He didn't realize it was time to get out of there, and he's gone down. Yeah, the, the problem here is that um, uh, they really have no answer for uh, uh, KS's uh, scout aggression because you saw Namida just run into the second pawn and die for no reason. But but I don't know, like it, it feels like they're kind of getting uh, mentally outplayed here by the aggression, so they really have to uh, deal with that somehow. I think they've got to turn on the counter aggression because if you look at MG scouts, they they're basically counter strikers. <laughs> Well, they play Counter Strike, but they're basically Counter Strikers. They really don't have that uh, the, the aggressive game style that Namita's yeah. Toki's got. Yeah, Counter Strikers just sit around for like five hours waiting for the other team to make a move. But uh, that aside, <coughs> I'm surprised Kusha Scout actually didn't push with that Demo Man advantage. I don't know what they were thinking. But uh, I guess, to be fair, this isn't the newest Snake Water, so the spawn isn't like a mile back. But uh, you two are coming out, oh. but. Never mind, MEJ losing two players, so what's happening to your own, Spamar? XVO again, the same. He, he uh, He's taking the same movement pattern as well. He, he opts to go on the top left side, the ramp room. I mean, not the ramp room, like the the edge, whatever you call it. And he took two guys down, OPD and the medic, I think, or a pocket soldier. So OPD is doing a lot of sneaky demo movement play now, and he knows he can rely on his, on his uh, aggressive scouts to push forward and probe a lot, so again, it's back to the same old uh, plan again, but I don't know, MG's got to change something. Yeah, just a little bit of clarification for our viewers. If you haven't uh, seen Asia Fortress before, they do play uh, similar to European rules. This is time limit 30 and uh, win difference 5. So this game is going to be over in 4 minutes, and that's something that has to be uh, part of the KS strategy that they can play. The clock got right here, they just absolutely... Uh, gifted MEJ with a chance to cap last year. So many frags coming in there. I didn't see exactly what happened. Maybe somebody can enlighten me. I think who's a scout were trying to like uh, aggress a bit too much, and their medic and pocket soldier got uh, caught off guard. And that's where MEJ's discipline comes in. You see, like they're very good at reading plays, Curry's man. So yeah, they took advantage of that, and they did slow and control push into the last point. The heavy had no chance. Like even though it's Namita, he had no chance, and they were able, able to cap the point. Aggressive play here from XVU, walking forward, putting down some damage on uh, the entire red front here. Then backing off to load, but there's been... Oh! oh. Back catches a pipe, he's gonna go down, and this might be what MEG needed to make this a tie game. They've managed to get a medic pick there in the middle, and there is no position here from KS. There's a scout on the flank, but immediately Babel turns around and fires a rocket in the meter's direction. He is shut down, sent to that spawn queue. Big uber advantage here for who? Six players up from Mook and G. This is uh, really looking like a potential round. XVO is going to go down as well. No demo man. This is pretty much a dream scenario here if you're pushing last. Thank the kimchi gods that Creep finally woke up because he uh, he really took advantage of, of the, the medic pick and he went on to the demo and the pocket soldier right away. It was a good play by him and I feel like he should have done that like uh, in the beginning of the game. And here we see uh, the, the, the last final push. <laughs> Scores a 3-3. Well, and uh, this will be going to a golden cap. There are no draws allowed. It does remain as a tie right now. We've got 2 minutes and 30 seconds left here in the Asia Cup Season 7 Division 1 Grand Final between Mukbin G and Kuso Scout. This is the first map, Snakewater, and I'm going to watch XVO onto this middle. He's just going to walk straight forward and, and do damage onto his opposite number, oh. OPD. Feeling oh strong. X feels super weak now, he's getting healed up, but there's a battle for air supremacy going on. Not upon down 30 HP, but that uh, does clear things up. Both soldiers here really weak for Kusu Sky. Creep's already gone down. And it looks like Kusu Sky are going to have to get out of here. Their health is just too weak, guys. They couldn't break that MEG line. 
I think the problem there was XVO died, like he was a demo rider and he died, and that's when Kusa Scout's morale got shut down, I think, and they knew they had lost middle, and oh my god, OPD's way ahead. Um, yeah, and MEJ, man, like like I said, they're a disciplined Korean team, and they know when to take advantage, and when to push, and when to capitalize on mistakes, and that's what they've done. Ubers are traded here in the lobby, XVO just uh, going in solo here to make something happen for his team, try and take the sting out of this. Uh, MEJ aggression, Yuki. How is this one gonna end? Or MEJ, do they have the momentum? Are they in the ascendancy here? Uh, full spawns off for both teams, and no utility on MEJ. But they do have a very slight over advantage, and they're building quite well. And I have to ask, did Spamber just say kimchi gods like two minutes ago? Because if so, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I was in the <laughs> middle of busy eating pad thai, trying to use chopsticks while drunk, and it's not the best thing to do. But uh. Um, yeah, even advantage on both sides, so 50 <laughs> seconds, I think we're gonna see a golden cap on this, MEJ, you know, just roll in and Kusa Scout hit their kill blinds, so, I know, we'll have to wait and see, as defensive sniper for Namida, uh, might get a clutch headshot, 5% uber advantage for MEJ, but that means nothing, so, hopefully they just bind, uh, plus forward and console. Uh, they managed to go in here and get the fort, Beagle's gone down though, on the flank, I think, to a sticky trap. Maybe that was an entry. XVO's gone down though. No demo man here to defend this last point. There's so much time on it already for MEJ. It's turned into a two on three, but it's a medic here, not a combat class. He's making a huge play. He runs onto the point oh, and nobody did not do. Who goes huge? Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. He clutched it in the dying seconds of a game that would have been going to a golden oh, cap. Shit. And uh, Mook and G find himself one man up. At one map up in this uh, best of three series here. Guys, what a climax, what a random end. I just had to say that, that was OPD there, like, he, no, nobody focused him, he was still alive and he was putting stickies on the point, and he was able to, uh, he it was able to kill XVO, I think, or a, a soldier, I don't know, but he was still alive, that was the key difference. And and that's when Nikusa Scout realized one second later that they had to shut him down. And then you saw what happened, like, the, the medic cap, oh my god. Yeah, they all went for the, the same target, nobody blocked the point, and uh, we will be going to Badlands here, but if you have joined us, you just missed the end of the first map, this was Team Forest TV's coverage of Asia Fortress Cup Season 7 Division 1 Grand Final between Mook Unji and Kuso Sky, I've been admiring, well, we've had Yuki, Spama and John here, and we will be continuing, uh, guys, I, uh, how does this set Kuso Scout up for the next map? You know, they're they're behind, they have to win both maps back to back now. And they're probably a little bit frustrated considering how how in control they seem for much of that map. They were ahead 3-1 at one point. What's their um, mindset going to be like here? Well, because if you read the chat right now, it seems like Kuso Scout, they want to change servers, even though, like, they both have nice ping. Well, I don't know. I, well, Japanese uh, teams are pretty much spoiled because they stuff? play on 20 ping. Yeah, we might have to change source TVs, but Kusa Scout, I think they might have an advantage in the second map. I think the second map's Badlands, right? So, Badlands is very, like, uh, it favors aggression a lot. I think, I have a personal feeling that Kusa Scout are going to take it 5-0, maybe. Well, uh, let's not fill up too <laughs> okay. much awkward airtime here with uh, us waiting for them to find a new server. John, maybe you can take us to a little bit of an intermission once we find out what's happening. I'll go and get a drink and uh, you, you can sober up a little bit. And Spammer, you can just stay handsome. John, play me out please. I'm handsome. No me.